Hey, Summit Highs, I bet you've heard by now that the governor of Texas, that's right, Jake, the governor of Texas said that we can have church. It's so awesome, Jake. Have you heard that? Well, kind of, sort of. It kind of reminds me of uh, my teenage son, Boston, who, when he was in seventh grade, yeah. he had always wanted an iPhone. Yeah. You know, the teenagers want their iPhone so they can have their Insta Trat and Chittergram and Facebook and all that, so Chittergram, Twitter, whatever that stuff's called. And so here's what we did. On his 13th birthday, we gave him an iPhone, but we put all the parental restrictions on it yeah. where he couldn't get his Twittergram, where he couldn't get his Insta chat. And you know what he said? He said, what's the point of having the phone if I can't use it the way I want to? I don't even want the phone anymore. That's what the governor's announcement reminded me of. You know, and that's so true because we really do want to meet together again. But after we looked at everything, Summit Heights Fellowship is just not designed for social distancing because we love to hug. We love to uh, social distancing, oh, sorry. Jake. Sorry. Okay. Um, we're just not built for that. And so what we decided last night, the elders, in light of all the restrictions, the cleaning and everything that's involved in that we can have church again. The questions we have to ask you at the door before yeah, you come in. It's just, I don't even want to ask. I don't even want to go through. The one yeah. that they, uh, no, no, no. Uh, it's a bad no. deal. So what we've decided is, is we're going to stay online for the month of May. It, it's going well. We're hearing great reports. We love uh, what, hearing from you guys uh, and so we're going to do that through the month of May and uh, we'll give you another update as we get updates and the governor gives us more so we we ask you to be um, um, graceful that's it graceful. That's a, graceful. yeah have grace we're trying to get this right nobody really has ever done this before and so a lot of it is guessing a lot of it is just trying to do the right thing and i know some of you guys you're ready for it to be over others of you are still very scared we want to respect both sides and everybody in between and so uh we're going to meet online for one more month and uh if you have a small group jake you want to talk about small groups real quick yeah so we're going to give the green light for small groups that have 25 members or less that meet in homes and so if you are a small group that's been meeting in homes we're releasing you we're giving you the green light we're trusting that you can put into practice the social distancing measures um, as long as you don't need child care you're good to go and I will be sending out an email to all of our small group leaders today reaffirming that you know one of the things Edward that was interesting in those restrictions is it basically limits us for what we can do children yeah I mean we can't have children's ministry under these restrictions and so that's why we're gonna give the green light for small groups that don't use child care if you're still a small group that uses child care we're gonna just have to put you on hold for a little bit let's see yeah. how quick texas the state of texas can get to phase two yeah and if the state of texas can move into phase two then we come back and revisit all this and, you know you talk about babies we do children's ministry and preschool ministry and youth ministry i think better than anybody around and and personally when we do get to meet again, I want Kid Venture to feel like Kid Venture. Yeah. I don't want it to feel like a hospital. I don't want to feel like they're all wrapped up and sterile and where we can love on babies. And we want youth ministry to feel like youth ministry and, and Kid Venture kids and small groups. And so again, that's why we're wanting to really wait until that, we open this up again. That word sterile. Yeah. Church. What were you telling me last night? Church should never be sterile. That's right. It shouldn't be sterile. In fact, actually, that's one of our elders said that to us last night. Church should never be sterile. Summit Heights is a safe place. It always has been for people to investigate the claims of Christ, but it's also been a place that people connect. We exist to connect people to God and others. The bottom line, relationship. And it's really hard to have a relationship behind masks and gloves and can't touch. Get away from me, Jake. Yeah, can't, can't handshake, can't hug. Got to put up plastic. Uh, what were those things called? Those plastic, plastic barriers? Shields. Yeah, yeah we got to put those up all over the church. So. Yeah, so anyway, we love you. Be graceful with us. We're being graceful uh, towards what they're asking us to do. And we cannot wait to meet again. Well, last night, I, I, I do want to share this because last night, we were talking about this in elders and um, the elders are unanimous on this, the staff's unanimous on this, and we're looking at this. And I asked the elders about, 
you know, hey, what do they sense and what do they do? And one of the elders, uh, Joe, shared with us last night that he had been reading in Ecclesiastes chapter three. And that's that very familiar passage about there's a time for everything. There's a time to die, time to live, time to cry, all those things you know about. And here's what he said last night. I thought this was so interesting. He said, you know what? Life is a risk. If we learn anything from Ecclesiastes, life is a risk. In fact, one of our other elders said, there is no shadow without the light. So we know God's still in control. Life is a risk. And the second thing is, is life is uncertain. If we've learned anything during this, and we learn anything from Ecclesiastes chapter three, that life is uncertain and only God knows the future. It's what I've been saying every Sunday since I've been back, is that we know just as much today about the future as we knew a year ago. Life is uncertain. Life is a risk. We were not created to be completely protected from everything. God is in control. Life is hard. But one of the things we learned from the Ecclesiastes is that life is to be enjoyed, is that we still have been planted here on mission that God has given us and he's not done with us. Doesn't matter what's going on with a virus or anything else, wars, rumors of wars, whatever, that we still can enjoy the life that God has given us and that true happiness is a gift from God. It comes from Him. And so this is the line that uh, was left to me last night after I got to the house and they sent me some notes. Is It says, get close to God and life becomes a joy. No matter what's going on, Jake, no matter what's happening, even though we still can't get together because of the way we're structured at Summit Heights, life is still a joy when we're drawing close to God. And so that's my encouragement to you. We're going to come back next week and give you some more updates. So be watching that. Be watching our Facebook. Be watching YouTube. Let me encourage you that um, this Sunday when you get um, up to watch our service, share that YouTube link. Share that Facebook link with five people. And share this video. Send this out as well. Hey, I love you. Can't wait to see you. Be safe. And we'll um, see you soon.